name is Therese Coleman, and I am an alumni engagement officer here at the University of Saskatchewan in the College of Arts and Science. I am joined by my colleague Don Warner from USASC's Student Employment and Career Center. The University of Saskatchewan is located in Treaty 6 territory and the homeland of the Métis. We pay our respect to the First Nations and Métis ancestors of this place and reaffirm our relationship with one another. We would like to welcome all of you, our alumni, students, and friends from whatever territory from whatever treaty territory or land you are joining us from. Although we are unable to gather in person, it is great to have this opportunity to connect with you and learn. Today's presenter, Don Warner, has a degree in sociology from the University of Saskatchewan and, on, and an ontological coaching certificate from the Newfield Institute. As an employment coordinator at USASC Student Employment and Career Center, her experience in human resources and entrepreneurship supports her passion in advising students and alumni as they transition in their careers. Thank you for sharing your wealth of knowledge with us today, Dawn. I'm just going to share my screen again and show you some instructions for the day. So for this webinar, Don will give a 30 minute presentation. This will be followed by a 15 minute Q&A opportunity. If you have a question you would like to ask, please enter it into the Q&A box and our student moderator Taha will verbally submit it to Don to answer. As you have likely seen, we will not be using the chat function today. We will be recording today's session. You will be able to access the recording on the Arts and Science YouTube channel after today's session. And now I will turn it over to you, Don. Thank you. Thanks, Therese. Um, and welcome. I'm glad to see there's so many of you taking time at lunch to tune in about interviewing. And uh, as I'm sharing my screen, I'm just going to ask Therese to put a poll question um, just so we can get a sense of who's in the audience. So she's just going to ask a question of, are you a student or an alumni? So Therese, when you have a minute, if you can do that while I'm pulling up my presentation. Great. So just to give us, I guess, an idea, curiosity to see who we're talking with, because in this virtual world, it's a little bit more difficult to tell. So I'll give you a couple seconds with that. Okay. And I think that's probably enough time, Teresa. Where are we at? Wow. Okay. Awesome. We got mostly students and thank you to the alumni that are there um, taking time as well that's great um i know our time together is a little limited so it's probably going to give you enough just in terms of some highlights and tips um but there'll definitely be opportunity like Teresa, said to ask some questions and taha will be doing that so in the q a i would just suggest as you go through if a question pops up for you put it in at that time even if an answer comes down the road that's fine but i always find that if you put the question right away it's fresh in your mind and we'll definitely get to as many of them as we can so to jump in since we have just about 25 minutes left to the bottom of the hour um today is around interviewing so um the other thing and i guess we'll, we'll start with another question as i'm kind of going through the purpose of it is just getting a sense of where are you at are you actively looking for a position right now or is this something that you're just getting curious about and wanting to know what interviewing is going to look like so Therese just popped up a question so we had an idea of if you're looking for employment actively now or just kind of getting proactive seeing what's going on and how to interview and either way, it is a great place to be, and we're gonna have a lot of tools and resources to help you along the way. So just to start off, I want you to know that you've come to the right place. There's a lot of expertise and support for you at the university. So it um, doesn't matter where you are on this path, there is people near and dear to support you. So to start out with the purpose, uh, okay, great. So we got a lot of proactive, we're almost a little, little bit more above than below. So, right, thanks for that, Therese. Um, we got a 60-40 split. Um, oops, hang on, there we go. Um, so with the interview, it, it is, uh, you know, a lot of times we get really worried and stressed out thinking, okay, well, this is our chance. We have to kind of show up and we're competing, which we are, but I really want you to kind of step back and reframe looking at an interview as it really is about an opportunity and a conversation between you and the employer. So it's an opportunity, absolutely, for the employer to see if you have the skills, knowledge, and experience that they're looking for and kind of verifying what you put onto your resume 
resume and cover letter, but it's also an opportunity for you to learn about that company and organization, to learn about that position and job to see, is that going to be a fit for you? Is that leadership style going to be a match for you? So all of that is really relevant and important for yourself as well. So it's kind of reframing what is an interview and it really is that opportunity for you to have a conversation to definitely it says further sell your experiences and it is important it is really important for you to have a lot of self-awareness because if you don't know yourself how are you going to share and communicate why you are the best one for that position and so self-reflection self awareness is really important and really you are the expert and should be the expert on you so in terms of interview formats, if we weren't in our current state of COVID, uh, there would definitely be more variety of interviews happening. The one-on-ones, um, which tend to be kind of an introductory, um, this is where human resources will usually pre-screen either over the phone sometimes it'll be one-on-one -on -one or an in-person one-on-one. Um, as well as the panel interviews. So this is when there might be two to four people there sitting across the table from you, interviewing you. Um, and now this is happening virtually where there's a panel or as well as in person. But we'll focus a little bit more on my talk. We'll talk more about the virtual platform because that is really more where we're going while the 101 was more that traditional being on campus. Um, now it definitely has shifted a lot as we all know that, but in all the interview formats, for the most part, what they're looking for is that your past behavior is indicative of your future behavior with the caveat that if you've had some self-reflection and growth, then your behavior since that moment where you learned will have grown, which is great. And I'll show you how to showcase that a little bit as well. But really most interview questions nowadays are behavioral based. So they do really need to know, show me an example from your past that will reflect to me how you are likely to operate in that similar situation if I hired you to come and work for me. Now with the panel, um, well, definitely very traditional and stuff. It, it is really important. They're breaking up the questions. Usually you'll have a hiring manager at the table. You might have someone that, from another department or area that you would work closely with. You'll have human resources at the table. Sometimes there will be a peer colleague. Well, that is a little bit more rare. It might be a more senior employee that might be on the team as well. So at this point, especially if you have a panel, it's okay to have a pad of paper with you and you can just let them know, I've got some paper here, I hope you're okay with that. And this is where I suggest when you're getting interviewed, write the names down. And if you've got a panel, write them in the order that you see them so you can get familiar with their names so that you can utilize that while you're doing the interview. Because again, this is a conversation. So you wanna make it where you are kind of interjecting, putting their names in, because as well, what the interview is showing is how will you interact with clients or other key stakeholders as well. So it's all part of the interview process. It's more than just the questions that they're asking. So the big thing too, and they will set up the introduction piece, maintaining eye contact, which again, in this virtual world is a little bit different. So I suggest that you play with your camera a little bit, um, get a friend or someone on the other side of the camera. So you can kind of say, well, if I look here, where does that look like that I'm looking at you and play with that a little bit is really helpful. And that's where I'm going into jumping down into the virtual is really taking that time to figure out how your webcam works, where the best eye placement should be and to play with it. It really is gonna take a different form of practicing and playing with it um, as well as um, you know, you can put a picture above the camera. That's one of the tricks that I do. So then your eye kind of goes above the screen and you kind of reflect back and forth. So your eyes are kind of staring in one space. Um, with the phone interviews, this usually is done in most cases, except for when technology doesn't work and you, you can't use the internet for virtual, is will be in that one-on-one -on -one initial call. So this is where they've got your job search documents, your resume and cover letter, and now they just want to follow up and do a 15, 20 minute conversation with you in most cases to find out a little bit more information to see if they can then want to take you to, to that next step. So what I really suggest is if you get the phone call and it isn't a pre-arranged time, let, your, let it go to voicemail. 
because what's going to happen is if you pick up, they're going to start asking you questions that you're probably not prepared to answer. So you might be in the middle of shopping, or even if you're just at home, let it go to voicemail, then you can phone them back after you've gone back got your resume, cover letter, the job posting, and kind of reread it. Because then that way you're prepared because every contact that you have with that company or representative of that company, you've got to keep in mind you are being interviewed. So you want to make sure that you're setting yourself up for success. And that's what I mean is not just picking up that phone right away because that recruiter is going to want to start asking you questions that you want to make sure that your mind is in the right place mentally and that you're not being disrupted by people coming in because that is part of the life. However, when we shift to virtual, that does happen. So again, if you're doing a virtual interview, you wanna practice with the equipment ahead of time. You wanna let your family, friends or whatever know when you're being interviewed. So hopefully you can find a space that's quiet without disruptions. Um, and so you're not being distracted. Again, I love the one about this time zone, very important to make sure that you're aware of what the time is for you and for them. Cause sometimes that can get tricky depending on where you're being interviewed from. Uh, so it is really be, be mindful of that as well as your background. So being mindful of what your background is not distracting. But I also want to jump into, and I talked about a little bit, is that self-awareness piece. Because before you can market you and really share why you are the best candidate for this position, one, you have to know who you are. Like you have to know what your skills, abilities, interests, achievements, all of that is. And it's funny how we don't really take time to become aware of that. And this does really start at the resume uh, stage. So if you've written a really strong resume, odds are you just got to refresh and dust yourself off at this point, because it really is important that you understand and you're able to quantify and qualify your skills, your education and experience and how they connect to the position that you're applying for. So knowing that job posting is really, really important. And that's why when I said to you, before you pick up the phone, know that job posting because they know their job posting inside and out. And you need to as well, because you have to be able to one to connect yourself to that job. Even though the recruiter or hire managing could probably make that assumption, it's up to you to say why your skills and ability are connected to that position and you are the best fit for that organization. And so it is really being able to have examples. So this is like when I talked about behavioral interview, you wanna be able to go back and say, okay, well, in this example, this portion demonstrates this competency or skill set. So if you're trying to talk about why you're really good at public speaking, so you're able to give an example of, well, from this experience in these moments, I had to speak in front of people. So this is what we're doing is connecting to that competency and how you got it and how successful you were with it. And being able, because then you're able to be more confident. And that's the thing is if you try to live those moments while and remember them while you're being interviewed, your brain is going to go through and try and relive the entire day. So it really, really is important that you've done this pre-work, you've figured out kind of those key messages, those key points and how they can really demonstrate that competency. It's going to show how prepared you are, how confident you are, and you're going to allow yourself to be able to articulate in a lot of better place in terms of how your skill set is there to support yourself and connect to that position as well as connect to the company. Um, and your accomplishments are really important to know. What are you proud of? And sometimes when we're put on the spot, we end up being humble. So you need, again, figure that out ahead of time. And if you're struggling to figure some of that out, talk it over with a friend, someone looking from the other side. And like, what is it that they enjoy about you? What is it about you that makes you stand out apart from the rest? It's okay to ask others for that information because our greatest gifts and abilities sometimes are so innate that we don't always know what they are. Um, and you've got to then be able to articulate that. So what I've been saying this whole time is around preparation. And that really is the key. Um, it's no different than when you're writing a, an essay or studying for an exam. You've got to study, you've got to research. So then when you get in there, you get to show the top of the game. So this is knowing that position, knowing that company. At this point of the interview, you should just be going back and refreshing your self because the researching for the position in the company should have been done when you apply for it so those notes that you took at that stage really will be helpful now i would definitely take a look at their 
the social media stream um, and the current news to see if anything has happened, if they've had some new announcements or something shifted, it's always great to do that as well as you can always interject and say, yeah, I just saw you guys had this amazing team uh, virtual event. I thought that was so exciting. It shows that you actually took that time to really connect with them. And so it can help in terms of that immediate conversation to build that relationship over a virtual platform, which is really helpful, as well as it can let you know that you really do care and you want to work for this company. Because again, if I'm going to have you and hire you and have you go talk to my key stakeholders, if you're taking this time to do this research in terms of an interview for yourself, Again, that behavioral pattern is you will do that with the key stakeholders, which means you're going to build stronger relationships. And that's likely the type of person I'm going to want on my team if relationship and interpersonal skills is important to me. And then, like we said, reflecting skills, comparing them, read, reread your resume and cover letter because you make changes from job to job. So make sure you know what's on the resume and cover letter that you gave to them because sometimes the next job you might tweak something. And then if you refer to something that's not on that resume, it just is really going to put a flag and they're not going to know what you're referring to. So it'll cause confusion. So now we're going to go through the interview questions and it is important to kind of prepare because you totally can do that. Um, but on the dress, just in terms of virtually, um, dress up, even though I know you can only see me from probably uh, chest down, it's important. Your dress is your superpower. Okay, it's like putting on your Superman costume or whatever, it, it gets your body into a space of resonance with you. So it's kind of bringing that part in. So if you're nervous and uncertain and stuff like that, when you put on that suit, it is just kind of letting you know, like, okay, I'm confident and your body gets into alignment, like, okay, we need to do this. And so it really helps you somatically connect, which is really important. Plus, it looks as a sign of respect that you've taken this time, that you really want this job, and it is showing respect for the organization. So I highly recommend that even though virtually you can get away without putting on dress pants or a nice pair of slacks or a skirt or something, I suggest you do the full thing as if you're walking out the door and gonna walk into that interview room, do that at home. Set yourself up for success as well as a note. Um, virtually, you don't have to worry about this, but if you're nervous, never chew gum because you will forget you have gum in your mouth and you'll be in the middle of asking or answering a question and then you're going to be awkward and not sure what to do and it does happen I've had interviews where people forget and halfway through they're still chewing it um smiling eye contact greeting definitely um nowadays everybody is googling everybody they're going to google you they're going to check you on linkedin I highly recommend that if for the interview if you're able to get the names of the people that are going to be on the panel or interviewing Go on LinkedIn and read their profiles because again, one, it gives you a sense of the people that are going to be at the table. You might find something relatable that you can weave into the conversation as well. And they're going to know you did that, which is okay because that's showing them that you took the time to do the research. We know it's out there, but it's basically the people taking the initiative to do those next steps. So now we talked about the interview um, being behavioral based. So there is a bit of an acronym that you can kind of keep in mind. There's different ones. There's the STAR. We use the one SOAR. So it's basically in terms of answering those questions, when you're going back to that life experience and trying to say, okay, well, I'm looking at how do I deal with conflict? How can I frame that? So you're going to look at it based on the situation. So it's like, how would I describe, briefly describe the situation? What was the obstacle challenge or goal that I had to meet? What were the actions that I took? And what was the result or that outcome? As well as this is that part where I said about past, past behavior is indicative of future behavior, unless you've reflected upon it, learned how you could have improved and have shifted it. So that's that reflection. So results really is the outcome, the results, but also any reflection that you might have had and lessons learned or ways that you could perfect and get better if you were in that kind of a situation again. Those are always very mindful and employers do really appreciate when they see that you've taken that time to do some reflection because that's what they're looking for is people that are wanting to grow, succeed and continue to grow. Now, I also want you to remind yourself that 
you are the star of the interview. So when you're talking about situations and stuff and obstacles, while there may be other people involved in the situation, you want to make sure that you're the star of the show so that when you're answering the question, you stay consistently around how you were in that situation and not kind of the supporting actors. And you don't have to go into sidebarring about the other team and stuff. You want to keep it distinct because really they're just trying to understand how you got the competency and how you responded in that situation. So some of the key questions that you'll face are the tell me about yourself, which is one of the questions that is not one of the most famous ones. Everyone gets very nervous. Um, it should be the easiest one when we're talking about ourselves, but it isn't always. But there is a way that we can um, answer that one. So I'll share that with you. Um, and you can prepare that one in advance as well. Um, why did you choose to study your program? What is it? So what is the passion? What drives you behind it? Um, what do you know about our organization? So a lot of times, this, again, this is that weaving in, um, why would you want to work for us? And so they won't need you spewing spat, um, stats at them. What you want to do is prove it by answering why you want to work for them and weave it in and connect it to you, your skills, your passions, your long-term goals, um, why you would be a fit. The why we should hire you is usually um, the, one of the last questions they ask. And really, this is when you do have to sell and market yourself, because if they're interviewing, let's say, five to 10 people, why would they choose you over somebody else? And so this is up to you to kind of bring all of your skills, education, everything that you know about that organization, weave it together. So it's like that final, it's your final paragraph, it's your conclusion. And so you want that to be strong. And that one, again, you definitely need to write out before you go into the interview why you're interested exactly this should be in your cover letter and all you need to do is go back and remind yourself of what you said the reason was and strengths and weaknesses will go into that as well so the tell me about yourself question we got our nice pause acronym so personal academic work and experience so when we talk about personal keep in mind that it's personal professional so this isn't about talking about your uh, marital status your, your desire to have children not have children that stuff you want to keep it personal so that they can feel they get to know you so it could be interest um, hobbies, a connection to the organization. Like you could say, wow, I saw on your social media that you guys had gone out and you played, um, bowl you went bowling, which was so exciting because, you know, when I was in school, I've always spent a lot of time. So it's a way to connect yourself in. If you just moved um, to Canada, one thing we do love to char um, talk about is the weather, the big storm yesterday. Um, this is where you could share. So if you're an international student, it's a beautiful space to come from because Canadians love talking about weather and we love to hear about those winter experiences. So if you have an antidote to throw into there, that can be great too. So I just, again, want you to prepare this question ahead of time because when you get nervous, this is when um, sometimes um, applicants have talked themselves out of a job because you start sharing too much. And while um, human resources and hire managers can't legally ask you a lot of personal information, if you start talking about it, they don't have to stop you from talking about and oversharing. So this is why preparing is so important because then you control what you're sharing and what you're not sharing. When you go into academics, again, remember they've got your resume, so you don't have to share everything. It's relevant to this job. So you can just say, you know, I've got my degree in X, Y, and Z, which is now supporting me with respect to the work that I've been doing. And again, it's not your entire work history. It's the relevant work that would attach to this job and be of value to the organization. Same thing with the skills. It's at a high level. You want to kind of look at that job posting, that organization, and kind of, again, it's an introductory to say, and these are the skills that I have and basically how I'm going to unpackage them through the end. Because remember, this is that first question. So you're highlighting on things that you want them, one, to have a high level knowledge about you. It's an introduction to you. So basically you're saying, probe me further on this, or I will share more of this through our time together in the interview. So again, it's this question is probably about three minutes, four minutes tops that you would have this conversation. So make sure you prepare and attach it to the job. So now another question that comes up that we always don't understand is what is my biggest weakness or strengths? And so what you wanna do, have a couple prepared 
Um, with your weakness, I would really look again, it's relevant to the position. So it's not every weakness that you have in your life. It's like with respect to that position, what would you say is your biggest weakness? So let's say for like in here, we've got a hard skill that you don't necessarily have a lot of experience with AutoCAD or something like that. That's okay, because then what you can say is, you know, I know in the job, this is one of the big things. I have basic knowledge. However, I've been watching some videos. And if you were hiring me for this position, I would definitely ask if I could take a course. I've looked into a couple that I could take. So this is showing where I see my weakness, but I'm taking the initiative and looking for solutions. So that's really what you're wanting to do is draw that attention. But a technical hard skill like this is something that you know that your skill is either weak or you don't have you're at the beginner level. But you've also looked for solutions in terms of how you can get it you know, a stronger level at. So that's an important because it's showing the initiative and they know that you're willing to learn. So now the soft skill, this is something you want to be careful about. One of the ones that sometimes has been overused is the perfectionist. You know, sometimes I'm a perfectionist and I don't know when to stop. Managing a perfectionist is really hard because as a manager, you never know when to quite tell them to cut it off. So honestly, I would just stay away from that completely. Um, where you want to go, like public speaking. Yeah, you know, this job shows that I have to do a lot of presentations um, in terms of senior leaders and community. So while I have some experience working, you know, with projects in the university, I haven't had to speak in front of large groups. So I have looked at Toastmasters and I've been taking, you know, leadership roles with respect to volunteering so that I can get more comfortable in the community and sharing that. So again, it's showing how you identified that weakness, but you're working on strengthening it. And that's the real big thing. We all have weaknesses. We all have areas we need to learn. But it's showing that initiative and ownership of how we're going to improve on it. So as I say, trickier questions, I, I guess maybe. Um, so yeah, sometimes they will throw in silly questions, tough questions. There's always the one, if you could be an animal, what animal would you be? Um, I'm not really sure the intention. Sometimes it's to pull up some of those skill sets, but sometimes I swear um, they're just having fun. Um, but some of them would be, which part of the job sounds most challenging to you, why? And so it could be tricky because they might be trying to put you in what, finding out that weakness or fault. So again, you want to make sure what is the intention behind this question? So again, if you're not sure, you can ask them to rephrase it so they can be a little bit clearer about their intention. And so again, this, I would frame it as they're probably looking to see where do you feel most uncomfortable and where's your weakness? So you want to make sure again that you're saying, well, I think this would be the area simply because I don't really understand AutoCAD or I don't understand the community. However, I've definitely already started to look at opportunities of how to strengthen them. So again, you never want to just leave it on. Here's the challenge and the why. You always want to put the solution and you attach that. And it's okay to add that part to it. And I actually, you need to. Um, with respect to what seller you're expecting, this question a lot of times will come up right at the beginning. Um, so you want to be, well, have done the research. So you want to Google, uh, you can look at Knock, you can look at Glassdoor, looking for what that salary expectation is. You can also ask them, what is the pay band? Right, what is the pay band so I know what I'm looking at? And so then you have an idea of where you could fit. And then depending on the pay scale and the organization, um, will really indicate where you're at. So one of the things that I'll usually do with getting asked that question is I say, you know what, what I would be looking in terms of salary expectation is to be paid equally in terms of my experience and education as other colleagues and employees within the organization. So really you're asking for internal equity. So references, this again is just how would you describe yourself? Uh, dream job, I would just go into long-term goals. Um, because they're just trying to trip you up and say something that you're not supposed to say. Um, now you get to the end, it's your turn to ask questions. So here at this point, you want to make sure you've got some thought out questions. So these questions should not relate to the negotiation phase. Wait till you've got the job. The point of the interview is to get to the negotiation conversation. So save that. Your question should be about the leadership, the culture. If I had to be there, what would this look like? And you want to make sure you're not asking questions that can be answered either in the job posting 
or from the website. So it's basically from looking at the website, looking at the job posting, and after the interview, what are other questions that you have? So you can ask, like, you know, with yourselves, what, you know, you've been working here five years. What is it that gets you up every day? What are some of the greatest challenges you're facing? What do you expect as a leader from me as you, if I worked for you on your team? So those kind of questions, this is where you're trying to get a fit for yourself in that organization. So in wrapping up, um, there's so much more to say, but we'll put it over to Q&A pretty quick. And um, this is a big part is that follow-up email. So I would even say within 24 hours, I would send a follow-up. And so before you send it, reflect back on that interview. What did you not share that you wish you could have shared? What point do you feel that you wanted to reinforce? This is a great time to thank them for taking the time to meet with you. And then you can add a bit on and say, you know, as I reflected upon the interview, I wish I would have shared this with you, right? And this gives you an opportunity again, that reflection piece, because you've reflected back on the interview, you learned from it, and you have that opportunity to come back and share which is a great way to look at it as well. Um, with technology, 15 to 20 minutes, I guess, I would probably get on and highly recommend that when you get that link, download whatever software they're using virtually, test it with a friend and stuff, and then practice with it a little bit ahead of time, just so you're comfortable and not fumbling around with it. Um, I think we've all gotten a lot more comfortable, but just in case you never know, life does happen. Make sure you're practicing those common questions. And in a minute, I'll put on the chat, we do have an interview guide that has a lot of the questions, all those acronyms that I've shared with you, um, how to go about an answer and prepare them is really important. So I wanna share that stuff with you and I highly recommend you look over our interview guide. Um, you wanna make sure that if your phone first call the day is your interview, that it's not. Phone somebody, sing, get your favorite music out. So while it even relaxes you, it gets those vocal cards going because it's no different than if you're having to sing on stage or perform. Get them going for you. Um, you really just need to practice. Um, make sure you've got a copy of your resume with you in front of you. Have some of those pre-written questions with you. L ask your references if they'll be your references. Ask if they will be available so that you can then let them know that they, they're expecting the call and you can follow up with them. And your references, I would give them a copy of the job posting, the cover letter and resume that you sent, as well as any follow up if there's certain key points you want them to speak to. Um, the other thing and last is book a session at the Student Employment Career Center. Like I said to you, there's supports everywhere for you on campus, and there is. The Student Employment Career Center, we do one-on-one -on -one appointments. We do them for resumes, cover letters, LinkedIn profiles. We do mock interviews so we can go through this stuff more specifically for you. And then we can also do a trial run of a, a real resume or interview as well. So I highly encourage you to look at that. So that's gonna end it for our time. I could probably go on forever, but be mindful that it's now Q&A time. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and allow Taha to come in and pull up any cute questions that are in the chat and we'll go from there. Over to you, Taha. Okay, let's get going here. So the first question asks, uh, what if a potential employer does not leave a voice message? or they call from a number and they don't give you a name or an extension, but the company name shows up on your screen? Um, that I think would be bizarre, um, but I guess it can happen. So at the end of the day, you almost need to just wait. Although if you did actively, um, you know, apply for a position and you know that, you could call and you could say, um, could, I speak to someone in human resources. It's a great segue to do that. I would probably give it maybe till the next day because what might have happened is the recruiter might have called you, got interrupted in the office, or they just hung up, didn't have a chance to leave a voicemail. So I would give them a little time to follow up. But absolutely, it can also be an opportunity to call HR and just say, you know, I applied for a position. I saw that I missed a call from your organization. And I just wanted to see if there was an opportunity that we could get together for a conversation about mm -hmm. my position. So absolutely, there's a way to connect yourself back. The other thing I was thinking related to that is that like sometimes you, it's an unknown number and like you don't know who's calling. So how do you tell if it's like a scammer or like an employer? Like how do you know? 
Yeah, if they know if it's from the company, like what they're saying, then that's different. And then I would just go directly to the human resources, especially if you've applied. But if it's just like a company and you don't know why they've called, yeah, that's why I said like you'd want to make sure that you apply for the position. Yeah. And then I would just then ask to be put through to human resources. Okay. Okay, next question. Is it wise to throw in icebreakers? to let them know you're easy going? Uh, it depends on what you're saying about an icebreaker. Uh, so really, I would, again, absolutely, I think you want to make sure they're aware of your personality. And this is that part. So it's kind of that first question where we talked about, tell me about yourself. So this is where you can share some of your personality. And this is where through sharing a bit of an anecdotal story, you can let them know that you have that personality or trait that you might be throwing it in. I would just be mindful of making sure it's professional. So you want to keep it serious because it can be difficult, especially if you're nerves and different personalities. Sometimes you can go into the comedy act and then that overshadows. So that's why I just say, bring it through your anecdotes, your stories and stuff like that and relax within that. But I don't know that I would start throwing in real icebreakers. For someone who deals with anxiety and other mental health issues, how would I go about telling my employer? Great question, especially nowadays, it is a big one. However, what I'm going to say in the interview, you're being interviewed for your competencies and abilities to do the position. Okay, it's not about if you have six kids, if you, you know, it, it has nothing to do with that. And so you want to be very mindful. Hang on. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm just reading your notes. Um, mindful that it's about you in terms of this position. So again, this isn't where you're negotiating those terms and stuff like that. So I wouldn't bring in any issues around my medical condition or any of that kind of stuff, because at this time, you could get removed from the competition and not even know. So really, this is a conversation. They're not allowed legally to ask you questions about your physical or mental health. So don't bring it to the table. This is that part though, when I said, we can get nervous and overshare. So make sure that you know the purpose of the interview is to quantify and qualify you and verify you for the position that they're hiring you for. Just because you have anxiety or other mental health doesn't mean you can't do the job. You just might have to use other strategies and tools and stuff like that. So this is again, being very, very mindful of what is the intention of purpose. And that's why you wanna prepare those questions. And especially if you struggle with anxiety and stuff like that, making sure you prepare will help your anxiety within that situation. So I just share and practice ahead of time. Okay, next question here. I think we've already kind of covered it in some of these answers, but the okay. person asks, do you have any strategies to avoid like kind of rambling on, like and not like going on too long? Some people I think have a tendency to do that, so. Yes, and again, when that happens, when um, oversharing or rambling happens, it's due to not preparing. Um, this is where, so when you look at, if I ask a question, tell me about a, a time when you were in disagreement or conflict with a person. And if you haven't sat down and got an example, then you're sitting there like, and this is when the ums come out. Um, well, okay, hang on a minute. There was a time that I was working at, oh, no, hang on. This one might be better. And so what happens is your brain is going and finding. So if you think of, I always think of this file folder in your head. So it's opening the drawer, taking out the file folder and it's looking at it's like, okay, so remember that day you were late, um, your toast burnt, you, you ran a red light, you got a stop sign, then this happened. And so your brain replays the whole thing. And so you see the person at the table. So I'm like, um, um, cause they're, they're sitting there going through that file folder, like saying, nope, 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 throwing stuff out. Whereas if I had thought through that question ahead of time and said, you know, what, great question. There was this time where my day started out horribly. I got to work. My colleague was all stressed out. You're late. And so you jump right into it. And so this is why it's so important to prepare. And when you prepare, you honestly become more succinct. You know those key points that you want to touch on. And you get rid of a lot of the ums. You get a lot of the rambling. And you come off sounding way more professional. And you will actually answer the question. Because when you're not asking it or answering it, 
you're really kind of trying to buy yourself time. So preparation. Yes, okay, next question. Any suggestions for interviews that include some form of practical activity such as with tech related positions? So again, this is when they're really testing your um, technical skills. So at the end of the day, my, this one comes down to a lot of times they'll tell you in advance of what you're going to have to write or sample an idea. So at the end of the day, my hope is that you are comfortable with your skill set. And again, if there's a process in a technical position that you have to go through is again, practice that procedure. What does that look like, right? So you know that structure and stuff and follow that. Ask them if you're able to have some tools, like if they can say like your cheat sheets with you, whatever that looks like. But so you, it's okay to come back to HR, especially if they're saying, this is what we're gonna have is some technical questions or this process, ask questions about it. Human resources is there to help you succeed. They're not there to try and trip you or trick you up and so you make a fool of yourself. It really is, if you're not clear about something that they've given you, go back and ask some follow-up questions and say, can you give me an example of what that might look like? So what can I prepare for or samples? It's okay to ask them for follow-up questions. They expect them, they get them. And honestly, it tells them that you're looking at preparing and researching it. So I would really highly suggest that you do that. And then again, practice, get comfortable with your technical knowledge so that when you get in there, you can give it your best. And also I would caveat to that is because they do have now technical sections. So that's testing your skill set. But when I was talking about hard skills, the other thing you want to remember is a technical skill I can help train you on. So if you do okay on it, but you do really good on the interview and you're sharing how you're a team player, how you could fit into that culture and organization and how as a manager, I would love to have you on my team because you know you take initiative, you take accountability, you are confident with knowing where your weaknesses are, but you take that initiative to learn it. I can teach you skill sets. I can't teach you to have a positive attitude. I can't teach you to take initiative or take accountability. So those are really valuable. So make sure if you feel that you didn't do so well on the technical part, if you've done the homework to show how much that you really want to work for that company in that position, you can actually kind of edge yourself out of somebody that might have done brilliant on that technical piece. So don't give up on yourself if you didn't do as well as you wanted to. Okay, next question, the person asks like what to avoid in terms of body language during the interview. Mm. So the big thing is you want to sit up straight. So this is where you want to sit on the edge of the seat. So never sit right back because then you'll slouch. So in terms of body language, if you're like me and you talk with your hands, nice thing is virtual is I can put it high enough that you can't see my hands moving around so much underneath. Um, but in terms of the cons, you, yeah, so it's a straight back. And this is what I talked about wearing that suit. So it's kind of like your costume. So you get your body. So put your roll your shoulders back. You want to have your chin up facing forward, hands down. So if you talk with your hands, put them underneath. You can cross your legs um, below. If you've got a chair that moves when we go into that or even at home, be mindful that you're not moving the chair because that happens a lot too. So sit in a chair that doesn't have wheels on it because you will just unconsciously start moving. Um, you you want to watch that you're not kind of moving your feet around. So that's why you can kind of cross them in an X underneath. And then just if you can keep your hands between your legs or if you're doing virtual, keep them low enough that people can't see you. So because see, this would be a little distracting. You start watching my hands instead of paying attention to me. And that's why even my background, I moved, took a picture off the wall so that when you look, you see me just like you, Taha, right? Like, so we're not sitting there staring at the nice mural or something behind us. Okay, this is gonna be our last question. So the person asks, what do you suggest for interviews with timed responses? To prepare. So I know some of them are doing pre-recorded, but I've also heard that, I won't say all, I would hope they would, um, again, are giving you the opportunity to kind of see the questions, you what the time results are. So again, it's coming to practice. This is the same thing when they say your resume should be one page or less and you're like, oh my gosh, it's about being succinct because the more you work on something, the more you improve that craft, the more articulate you become. And that's what they're looking for. They want your questions to be sharp and succinct. So it comes down again to that practicing, knowing your skills so you're able to get that question and answer it. And if they don't give you 
um, the questions ahead of time. Again, it's that preparation. If you know your skills, you know those top questions and there's lists, we've got them on our websites and you can Google anything and find them, have answers for those questions and practice them in front of the mirror, say them out loud, um, especially with the video and the timed responses now, practice in front of the mirror, record yourself. Again, there's always gonna be one student at least, or one applicant that really wants this job and they are going to do all these steps. So again, getting a full-time job is a full-time job. And if you really want to keep in mind, it's quality over quantity. So if you want varying rates, apply for a lot of jobs and you can tell your friends you did that. Otherwise, if you really want a job, get to know yourself and throw everything you have into those few that you really, really want. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, both Don and Taha, for uh, being here with us today, for sharing your knowledge, Don, and for helping us moderate our questions, Taha. We really appreciated that. So thank you, everyone, uh, for attending. And we are going to end the session now. You have a great day. Thank you. Bye, everyone.